Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's channeling showcase. And our guest today is Jesse O'Brien. Hello, Jesse. Hi. 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 Um, good. So, Jesse has dedicated time to spiritual growth and psychic development over the last few years. And his background is in art and music, where he is constantly in the space of inspiration and receiving downloads. So channeling has become a major part of his journey and spiritual healing. And today, Jesse is going to be channeling Isa. So Jesse, welcome. I wanted to just ask you a few questions before we get into the channeling. All right. Let's do it so it sounds like in a way, channeling has been part of your creative life for a very long time. So why take it a step further to the type of channeling where you're connecting with guides and bringing forward information? Um, well, a lot of it, I just kind of uh, stumbled my way here. And uh, my, my path in life has, has led me to, uh, you know, seek it out my spiritual side and um, it's opened me up to a lot of, of, of things and, and has reconnected me to um, a lot of, uh, you know, beliefs and things that I had, you know, pushed out of my world and for so long and I didn't feel complete anymore. And uh, I had to turn within and, and uh, you know, find, find some uh, answers. Right. For, for what was going on and, yeah. you know, that, that led me down the road of of developing psychic gifts it led me down the road of um, finding peace within and um, and I'm just interested in, in channeling because there's a lot of times playing music where I'm in a trance and things come in and out <laughs> yeah and, uh, yeah so, so this is that's very cool. So the guide that you're channeling today um, mm. is known as Isa. Yes. So what do you know about Isa? Who is Isa? Well, at first, the first time I experienced Isa was... Well, or was, um, you, you were the first one to make the connection, um, of who he is. So it, it's somebody, it's, it's an energy that came to me and, and, um, that was, that's how I developed a relationship there. And so Ooh. Isa is Jesus, and that's I says the Islamic version, which I thought was kind of a little not not, not weird because I I saw I see a lot of dogma. Are are you having? So, <laughs> right, did you hear any of that? Because it's it's me. It's freezing. It's yeah, like, it's, it's freezing on it's freezing on your end. Let me pause the recording. Okay. So, Jesse, you're going to be channeling Isa today, and can you tell us a little bit about who is Isa? Yes, um, Isa. I, uh, originally, when he came to me, it was in a dream, and I did not associate Isa with who he is as well. He, Isa is the Islamic name for Jesus, and the Quran speaks of Jesus as Isa the prophet. And I unknowingly, no, I just never, I never knew that connection. And no. I believe talking to you was the first time that connection was made to me. And uh, so since then, I've, I've 
accepted it and, and, and it makes sense that he came to me that way and not as Jesus because I do have a Catholic upbringing. Do you think and, you would uh, have rejected it if he'd said hi? Yeah. I'm Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. Definitely at the time when 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 I had the first dream with him, and I wasn't in such a spiritual place, and uh, definitely would have rejected it. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so that's that's how uh, came into contact with with Isa. And what have you personally learned from Isa from from your channelings and connections with Isa? Just the ability to uh, really take things as they are and um, be present in the moment and um, start working on the the internal side of me and opening up my connection to a higher source, you know, to, to, to God and to spiritual teachings and, uh, you know, just really dropping the dogma to it and, and accepting it and taking it in. Wonderful. Yeah. And how have you been enjoying the channeling course? <laughs> the course has been great. There's been some unexpected uh, hits for me personally, like the uh, the ET thing and, and the galactic thing was a, was a, a, a major point recently. It was uh, some, some new breakthroughs and uh, I really enjoy it. I, I enjoy the the different realms and learning how to to uh, match my frequency to to uh, reach out and, and meet things halfway. And it's been a, a very good course for me to take. Wonderful. And do you think that channeling is something that everyone should try? If 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 they feel called to it, yes. Um, I, I know not everybody. Uh, you know, has has the the bandwidth, I guess, to, to uh, step into something like this, and, and the world is changing though, and, and so I, I believe uh, future generations are definitely going to be so accepting of this, and and, and it is a uh, a new frontier for for a lot of people that don't have the time uh, in their busy lives to to. Uh, you know, turn to this or have time to even think about spirituality and yeah. channeling. Yeah. So. yeah, I yeah, but totally, I, I agree that as we move forward, more and more people will be able to do this and to be able to do it much more easily as well. So without further ado, let's talk to Isa. Let me know when you're ready. Hi, sir. Can you tell us who you are and how you can help us? Um, I am Isa. I am an ascended master. I have walked many times on planet Earth as human and as spirit. Um, I would like to expand on teachings of spirituality and how it has a healing effect and is, and brings people to enlightenment and the separation of of the individual and to them to the world is uh, something I would like to bring clarity to and help humanity move forward. Would you say that our biggest challenge is how we separate ourselves from one another and how we separate ourselves from God? Or if not, what is our biggest challenge? There's many answers to that question. Um, I think the separation I believe the separation from from God 
is a big challenge to overcome. And I also believe that the separation from man to, to nature is another aspect. Um, there's a lot of fear in this world and the more you can find peace within yourself, you connect to others, you connect to the planet, you connect to God, and this brings unity that is very much needed in today's world. How can we, what are some ways that we can cre create more union as people? Finding more trust and your own ability. Um, learning how to coexist and accept other people. Um, accept the fact that other people are on a, might not be on your path. And there has to be room for allowance and, and tolerance without, you know, the, the, the more you're afraid to face the people around you, the more you're harboring low vibrations and it just creates more division. So a good starting point, I guess, to say would be to figure out what's, what you truly want in life. What, what are the the core principles that you need to survive in this world, feel safe, and to find trust and, and show trust to others, give them the, the power to uh, trust you and love. You know, a lot of the principles, the teachings of love is a, is a good starting point too. It's, it's the acceptance of all things and, and staying neutral to things that are different. And that's a good starting point. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's so many key steps and you know, the process to, to finding peace within is a, is a long road that people dedicate sometimes multiple lifetimes to. And it's not something that can happen overnight. Um, having the the strength and the courage to stand up for what's right. All of these are different aspects of, of you know creating a better connection and moving in a better direction. You said at the beginning when you were introducing yourself that you wanted to help us to heal, help us with healing. I've got two questions I want to ask you. One is just to tell us what your definition of healing is. What does healing mean to you? And the second part is, is every single human on a healing journey? And, or maybe there's a third part, which is just how, how can we heal? What are some simple principles to answer the question, how can we heal? Fortunately, you're that. <laughs> um, 
let me go back into trance. I apologize for any low bandwidth. I don't know what's it's okay, going on Jesse. Here. Um I'll pause the recording again. So, Isa, at the very beginning, you said that one of the things you really wanted to help us with is healing. So I wondered what, we, I mean, I think every single human has their own concept of what healing is, but what is your concept of healing? How did you, what do you describe healing to me? Healing is, is the uh, shifting in energy and changing in energy that is destructive to people, destructive to all things around. It's um, the idea of healing people would be to uh, show people an alternative and give, give some positivity and radiate love and show give people the power to to be healthy and secure and and to be able to change some beliefs and and guide people and you know utilizing the energy within within yourself um, i think a, a lot of that comes from coming into alignment and doing the spiritual work within yourself and coming to an understanding that, you know, anything that happens in your life is, is the, is, is an extension of what's within your life, you know, so to heal yourself and fix these things and come into alignment with, with you as a whole person. You can follow your path and then you find joy in things and that joy spills out and it, it gives people the ability to do so it's it's a um, you know it, it's a changing the vibration i guess would be healing is, is lifting the uh, spirit out of the density of, of low in frequencies so how so it sounds like one of the key things about healing is to come into balance and to come into alignment. Yes. So what can you tell us about being in alignment and how can humans know if they are in alignment or if they're out of alignment and what can they do to shift themselves into alignment? Well, if you're a person that finds yourself frequently at odds with things or you have a lot of issues and, and trouble seems to always be, you know, like you're always hitting roadblocks, that's a good sign that you're not in alignment. And the way, you know, if, if bad people are entering your life, if bad things keep happening to you, chances are you, you need to find a unity. And, and accept things you you have to go within you have to do the work you have to understand that what's happening in your world is an extension of what's going on inside you and you are the mirror so your frequency if it's not up to par you'll attract those same things into your life and it'll perpetuate itself and bring you down farther. Um, so a good a good way to overcome the challenges that people can face is to really go within, side yourself, and figure out what it is that you're reflecting out to the world that's causing that same energy to come back to you. Like what what are what's happened in your life that has made you, you know, that's shifted your frequency to, to draw in those same things constantly over and over again. And, and that will repeat itself until you can learn to, or find, 
find where all those damaged parts within you are and change them and use that energy and transfigure it and turn it into a higher vibration take those challenges that you know those things that have changed you and learn to accept them and take them as a lesson and learn from it and move on and accept it so that's the process of healing your soul whether you're on the process of finding enlightenment whether you're in the path of just wanting to know yourself whether you're a healer whether you're you know, whatever, to, 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 to bring your life into unity with source, with the world around you, and to find a good flow to where there's no more of those, you know, the constant um, friction. And once you can heal yourself from within that way, you begin to reflect the healing parts, you know, the parts of you that, that no longer have resistance. And then those begin to thrive and it's a snowball effect that brings that same positive effect into your life from the external world. So the, the pathway to, to, to enlightenment or healing or whatever starts within. And that's the good basis. That's the good foundation that um, spiritual leaders have been teaching for as long as mankind's been around, and these are the, you know, um, the process of changing your life for the better and bringing yourself into an abundance and love into acceptance. And people have a tendency to separate themselves from these beliefs and people separate themselves from the planet and the world around them. They think it's they're different and they don't know that they are part of they're they're more at play in their own reality than, than they have any idea. And you can only make that connection when you put in time and really worked at changing the, the bad energy that you harbor within and you know, we all harbor good and bad. It's, it's not a, it doesn't mean somebody's worse than the other because they have more things to work on. Um, it's just a matter of awareness. And, and uh, once you're aware of that, of, of that you are your source of your life and you're connected and what you fear, what you dislike, all the things, whatever you bring into focus in your mind has manif will manifest into the external world around you. Um, so th it's important to heal within in order to heal the surroundings, to, uh, to bring back, you know, the connection of who we are as a spirit and how we're all connected and the betterment of our behaviors and how we treat one another. It's, it's, it's the unity that, that facilitates spiritual healing. And that's the reflection. So if you can, you know, well, I guess, you know, what we put out into the world is what we get back. Yeah. And that's a, a hard thing for a lot of people to understand. Yes. Um, so um, a good thing would be to encourage others to, to really take time to look at themselves and find out the cause, you know, the root of these uh, disturbances and, and the frequencies and try to uh, heal that within. And that's the process. That's the process to manifestation. That's the process to um, spiritual fulfillment. That's the process to uh, humans, to, to, to us in the physical realm and our fulfillment here. And it's, it's 
just something that's been lost. And it's a very simple concept if people understand that that's all they have to do to uh, you know, change, the, change the world around them and, and lift it up. So the principles of healing then, just to reflect back at what I believe you said, is the first thing they taught in the mystery schools, know thyself. And that means knowing the core essence of who you are and knowing the projections that you've made, you're making because of the energies within you. And then as you look at that, to accept everything that you find, because if you don't accept it, you can't change it. Correct. Exactly and right. so then let go of the things that are not allowing you to have a pleasant reflection. <laughs> that. Yes. <laughs> and that's that, so easy. that's and done, but yes, that's uh, yeah, yeah, and then rinse and repeat basically. Yes. Yeah. And this this is this is uh A lot of people, a lot of times, it, it could take many lifetimes to uh, to solve these problems that you carry and that you bring into, you know, if you don't figure, if, if you don't come into the oneness and the unity with those ideas in this lifetime, you will carry those into your next life. And this will be something that you will work on and keep working on. That's okay, you know. It's not a race, and I guess the uh, first step in fulfillment and, and happiness and love is to know thyself. It's that fundamental, that easy, that simple. That that's the the correct way of going about it. Maybe not necessarily the a linear like in a linear fashion but this is a core teaching that one must have in order to change anything and so yes you are correct and, so we, uh, yeah we ahead. have an eternity we have an eternity and yet so many of us, I think, especially in our modern spirituality, are in such a hurry. <laughs> I hear many people say, I don't want to come back. I want this to be my last lifetime. And, um, you know, put pressure on themselves to perfect themselves. And could you comment on that? Because presumably you would say that's not really what it's about. What it's about is... Um, is is I I talk about sort of the that your energy is like the window and you're wanting to shine your you, you're wanting to clear your window so that it's your essence that is shining here on earth. Yes. And so so should we I guess the question is should we be in a hurry to do that? <laughs> um are we uh, putting too much pressure on ourselves when we think we need to do it this lifetime? Um, it is putting too much pressure. People are in a hurry. And this is because their life, they, it's, it's the unknown factor is what causes this hurry. You know, it's one who's separated from source doesn't understand that our lifetime now is just a fraction of our existence. And there's no need to rush anything. Things happen divinely. They happen when they're supposed to happen. Uh, people have their awakenings at different points. People, um, you know, they, they, they come into their own strengths at different times. And it's a there there is no hurry and it's if one doesn't have faith in your soul continuing past this life then i think that's what 
that that minute even having that minutely in the back of your mind will cause you to want perfection and will cause a it almost brings ego to it right it's um and it's not about that it's it's about you know you becoming the creator of your life and you becoming a you know the, the highest version of yourself and the, is uh, something that can you know some people can can do that quickly others can't and that's just the way it's going to be and that's the way it's always been um, maybe uh, for for people that have not found their spiritual calling or their sides it's not their time yet to wake up and they'll rush through life and you know all the things that they thought they fixed um, they might have to come back and face again or you know, do, it, do it another time so it's it really there's no there's no rush to it and it's a problem to rush things because you skip things when you rush and there's so many facets and assets like in, in different parts of ourselves and of our spirits and of who we are and what we are to uh, to want to go quickly through it and you can slow down a little bit mankind should slow down a little bit it's uh, racing to a stop sign so you've talked a couple of times about the higher self and alignment with the higher self um what is the higher self? The higher self is you on the source, on the level of you, the creator. It's your, the version of you. It, it's, we are an aspect of our higher selves. So in a way, as a creator, in a way, it's, it's kind of a, a personal godliness that we are part of our existence we create our existence our higher self has created all of these um, timelines and versions of us to to go through our struggles and to overcome them and, and um, so w when i say coming in line with with your higher self is just really coming in line with your purpose and and no longer fighting uh, within yourself. It's it's the the acceptance of you are at the right time in the right place. Like you are where you're supposed to be and living right now. So the process of, of coming into alignment is 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 a, is really the the entirety of it. I mean, it's all one thing, but to be aware of having a higher self aligns you more with it than, than you would think. It's, uh, you know, you as the creator, you are the creator, you, you are God, you are divine, you are an aspect of, of the source of all things, and that is the higher self. You. So I want to talk about love and in particular self-love. I feel like many of us are on a journey at the moment to love ourselves more. So many people in what we call the light workers community are so um compassionate and loving and giving and helpful to others but forget about themselves and it in a way it's easier to to accept another <laughs> than to accept yourself it's easier to love another than love yourself can you talk to us about self-acceptance and self-love and how we can be more loving and accepting of our own selves. 
okay, well, that's, you know, the, the, the idea goes back to everything we've been talking about today. It's, it's a, uh, to love yourself is to come into alignment with yourself, to, uh, um, to, to look back at what, what, what are the reasons why you're not loving yourself, what makes it so hard, and to, to go deep within yourself and find those points that have, you know, skewed your perception of who you are. And, you know, you can have purpose and you could know your purpose, but you're not doing any good if you're not coming from within, within the space of your heart, within the space of, of uh, loving yourself and taking care of yourself. And there's physical aspects to this, and there's also, you know, spiritual aspects. And it is easier to want to help other people, but you do have to go through helping yourself first. And you do more, you're not doing the good you think you're doing if you haven't taken time to, to, uh, you know, change the broken parts of yourself and to learn how to accept yourself and all of the things you don't like about yourself. And really just, you know, it's, it's two sides of the same coin that you, you are the beauty that you are and you are the beauty that you are. You have to go in inside and find those points in your life to to change that and to accept it and come into alignment. And then you can love yourself and you heal yourself. You become the best version of yourself. And now you are capable of bringing that energy and, and uh, having that radiate from you and that source of empowerment of of you and your love that you have, others will receive that. And so that is, you know, that's light workers healing other people and just that the key to anything is, is within. And that's the, you know, that's kind of the topic of the day. And this is what I wanted to discuss. It's all, it's all relative to each other. And so no matter what, I guess where I'm going with everything is no matter what it is you are doing in your life, you have to love yourself. You have to know thyself. You have to heal yourself and take time to accept every part of yourself. If you don't accept something within, you don't accept any of it. You, uh, you truly don't, you are truly not in acceptance. If even one aspect of who you are is something you will not look at and, and attempt to change. Is love always nice? Love, love is nice. Yes, love is is. You know, love is not an action. Love pushes you towards action. Love is um. It it all be the definition of nice. <laughs> um, love is the ability to accept. And. That's the acceptance of some things aren't just, you know, some things aren't nice. And you have to be able to look at that and trust that. And love is, love is always the one presence. That's the, uh, the energy that facilitates light and goodness and, and the uh, desire to, uh, to move forward. It creates the momentum for rapid change, and it takes 
people out of their everyday ruts and their routines. And it, it's the energy that, that gives you the desire to um, really fix what's, what you feel you need to fix and change. So love is beauty and love is not so nice. It's nice and not nice. It's not nice if you don't want to uh, face certain things, but it's, it's love doesn't judge. Acting out of love isn't judging. It's, um, but the reason awful. I asked, I'm sorry. Go ahead. The reason I asked that question, I was thinking about, I guess, in a way, the relationship between love and truth and the idea of tough love. So let's say you have um, a teacher and a student or a parent and a child, and the child is not seeing the truth. Maybe the child is taking drugs, or maybe the student is, um, I don't know, doing something with their energy that's, that's negatively affecting other people, and they're unaware, or they're not. And so the parent or the teacher may have to well, you advise on this, be um, blunt yes. with the person out of love to help, to try to help them see what they're doing. And so, and that can feel hard to do, to say a harsh truth to somebody. Yes. And, and so... Maybe talk about how if there if we need to say a harsh truth to somebody, how can we do it? Because we, you know, a lot of us do want to be nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, teaching somebody lessons in their life isn't necessarily love. It's a it can it can be a frustration because you have you might you will have love for that person and the unfortunate thing to that situation because yes you want to do this because you care about them and you see them making the wrong choices um, all you can do is offer them a better solution and that's what that would be love um, controlling their behavior or getting like being forceful with tough love I guess is, is not an act of love but offering support and guidance and remaining dedicated to helping that person or that child uh, correct their, their behavior um, or to shed light on what's wrong with their behavior would be an act of love. So uh, it's, it's more or less, one is tough love I feel is, is a feels necessary yes uh, it's just how you approach it so you can be tough with your determination you can't be tough with your action um, and it's still something that you would need to approach with kindness and respect and if you're not approaching that if you're approaching somebody's behavior out of your own frustrations that's not an act that's an act of, of frustration. Um, so, so it all depends on, I guess, you know, um, the intentions behind your actions. And now accepting that bad behavior is not an act of love either, although acceptance is love. Um, that's why I say that situation would be your durability and, and how much that person means to you is how much you're going to dedicate your self in offering that person a different outcome to and, and hopefully that they can change their minds. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't happen that way all the time and, and a 
emotions can run high and that can skew, skew um, a response. But there's, there's really no good response for that. And, and being on this planet and being human, unfortunately, is, is uh, will pin you against your, you know, the, the route you want to take sometimes. And it will only give you two, two bad options. And that's, these are the lessons and these are things where we have to be strong within ourselves to uh, help move forward. lead by example to those to those people and to offer them a, a, a way out a different way but you can't force it on anybody um, if it's your child you don't own that human you, I mean, you still don't own that human all you can do is if, you, if it takes lifetimes <laughs> of correcting that behavior you know, that, that's what it, if that's what it takes for you then yes but love is not a the act of tough love. The act of tough love is discipline. And that's not a, a part of love. So I don't know if that, that, that was a lot to answer one question, but I guess yeah. that's a, a hard question to answer. Thank you. Um, I've, I've got another question for you and I would just ask you to speak up a little bit. Um, yeah. I wanted to talk about uh, more about love and compassion and operating from the heart versus operating from the head or the balance between head and heart. Can you talk to us about, about that? Well, to, you know, um, it's in, in the world of action and reaction, it's, it's easy the way society is structured, you know, it, it teaches us how to be here and alive and to ignore the heart and ignore the emotions and work out of ego, work out of competition to work out of, you know, just the complete opposite of the heart space and, and your emotion and to, there's, there's a, a, it can be hard to, to find compassion because the world tries to take you out of the compassion side, like out of the emotional side that we all have and deal with things in a practical way, in a way of, uh, you know, using the mind. And, and that's, when, when you shed the, the beliefs of society or the beliefs that have depend on you and placed upon you, it, it forces you into you know, how to, how do you handle things? Are you coming from a place of compassion from within, from not being a victim, from, from kindness, from all of these things, would you give to somebody else? You know, the, this world teaches us to not be that way and to, to uh, do what we can and only care about ourselves. And, and there's, the, you know, this is an important thing. Yes, ego is important. Um, logic and, you know, creating a, a, a better place for you and advancement and making sure you have comfort in this, in this world is, is the way you're taught to approach life. And it, it takes you away, unfortunately, from the... From, from your divine self, from, from the compassionate you, from you that wants to give everybody and everything the equal opportunity. And um, so 
so when one when one acts out of love and out of acts from the heart, there's a peace in that, knowing that what you are doing is selfless, um, as long as it's not detrimental to you and you're giving too much. Um, it's especially in, in modern societies, you know, it's, um, it's just a hard place to be. So for, to take time and meditate and to try to find balance between the two is so important for maybe not your rewards here and, you know, from this, this life in the physical regard, they're regarding in the physical world. But if you can find a balance and, and stick to your core principles through your emotion and through your heart and through love and through acts of kindness and, you know, and respect, you know, that, that's your, you're respecting everything around you when you act out of love and you act from your heart and but you have to live outside of that sometimes and so so the balance in meditation is, is accepting that there's some decisions and some things that are going to be you know that you have to separate from from your heart space and, and still keep going but those the times that you do choose that that path of compassion this is that's you're, you will be rewarded in spirit. You are rewarded in spirit for that. And it's a different vibration than what this earth offers us. This is, you know, this, this planet is competition. You're here, life is short, you're removed from source, you do what you have to do. And, you know, the, the thing is, is, is when you leave this planet and you're passing on, did you keep true to the principles you are in spirit? Did you take time to think of others and be considerate? And that, so coming from the heart space is, is, a, uh, is something that, that one, one must learn and really take time to to learn how to balance the two, because if you're not in balance, then you're ruled by other things. You know, you, you're going to miss a lot of things, and, and you're you're not connected with source. So, you know, the uh, there's the in, in Egypt they talked about the. Uh, you know, weighing the heart and is it heavy? Are you full of burdens or regrets and things like that? And those are things that happen when you work out of, out of a competitive space. And you want to make sure you have time to, to have compassion. So you can leave this world with, with a light heart, knowing that you stuck true even when it was hard. Um, that's the reward. And it's an important, important part of being spirit. So uh, it's just not in our physical bodies, in our physical life, it's not always so black and white. And that's why where faith and sources. So that, that's really all I have to say about that. That's, uh, okay. So, so. Um, I'm going to ask a final question and then I might just give the people watching the opportunity while I ask my final question if they want to write any questions um, in the chat box. So does it matter what we do with our lives or is it more, is it more important how we live them than what we do with them? I'm glad you asked that. Um, <laughs> I think the importance is 
how you live your life, the decisions you make during your life, not what you do in your life. In the 3D world, you might be defined by what you do, but internally and in the spirit realm, you're, you're, you're defined by who you are, and that's, that's what defines you, uh, not what you do. So I would say live, live your life based on, you know, yourself. And it's not about what you do. It's about how you live it and find peace within in the process. Okay. Is there, so you said, oh, I'm glad you asked that question. Is there any other question you wished that I had asked? <laughs> No, I just, um, that, that's a good question to end on and, um, you know, more more will come, uh, but that's for another time. And, you know, the, the idea of, of living a life based on who you are is, is, is just that it's the true true essence of who you are that's who you are it's not what you are so thank you for the questions and thank you for giving me this time thank you very much thank you for everything that you have uh, shared with us we appreciate you we appreciate jesse thank you That was wonderful.